We'll invite our next presenter to the podium, Howard Ho. Uh, hello, my name is Howard Ho. Uh, this summer, I've been researching uh, CUDA and GPU programming in genomics. Uh, my mentor is Ji Hoon Kim, and I am a junior at UCSD studying uh, my bachelor's in computer science. And first of all, I'd like to give an overview of parallel programming and uh, what GPU processing is. Now, if you guys have used a computer before, you know what a CPU is, well, probably. And most programming nowadays is you are using CPUs with multiple cores. Uh, most CPUs nowadays are quad cores, which are really powerful. But as we move forward, there is a lot more interest in using more parallel processing uh, capabilities. And one of those ways is through the GPU. Uh, GPU stands for uh, Graphic Processing Unit. And if you guys have played video games before, you guys know exactly what that is. But um, for those that don't, it's, it's been used to render uh, images and videos. But within the last five years, um, there has been use of these, uh, of, of GPUs in research. Uh, NVIDIA created uh, CUDA, which is an architecture to program on the GPU. And in doing so, we are able to speed up calculations by uh, really big magnitudes. Uh, I'll go into that more of that later. But the reason that it's been so popular recently for researchers is that it's supercomputing on a budget. You're able to speed up processes so, fa so much faster, but you're not wasting so many resources getting uh, supercomputers up. And if you guys will notice that um, the reason that GPUs are so much more powerful is that while CPU could have a dual core or a quad core, uh, currently they're limited, while a GPU has hundreds more uh, processing power available to them. And in the, for bioinformatics and for biomedical computation, currently there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of research and a lot of tools out there for GPU programming. Uh, there's such things as like medical imaging and analysis, reconstruction, uh, data mining, DNA sequencing, RNA sequencing. And um, the image to the right shows NVIDIA's, um, their own benchmarking of the system as compared to a CPU. And if you guys look at the numbers, they're pretty staggering. We could have up to 100-fold in speed increases. And if you think about it, that means that a process that could take a week could take hours, maybe like, well, maybe a day, but probably even hours. And that means that researchers are allowed to um, think about it quicker, get their data faster, not worry about the aspects that are out of their control. They don't have to wait to look at um, the data that they want to look at. They're able to think, and everything that is um, out of their control is more in their control, I would say. But there, uh, the reason that I, we want to look at using GPU in genomics is that there's a lot of stats, statistically based uh, problems in genomics right now. And to, um, we want to speed up those calculations, those problems that people are having, uh, whether it be pre-processing of data or analyzing the data uh, currently or even post-processing for the analysis. Uh, each of those procedures could be sped up by uh, using GPU programming. And uh, through my studies and research of possible GPU uh, programming, uh, I found studies that showed that a lot of hours are spent into managing data and uh, getting the resources together. And I think that's a lot of wasted time that uh, researchers could be using doing the analysis of the final product rather than the managing of the data itself. And um, another topic that I was interested in is that because data sets are becoming so large and processing is becoming very important, uh, I think it's really interesting to look at new ways to process the data, new ways to go through data, and uh, ways to handle data sets themselves. 
So my main focus over the summer, besides researching uh, GPU programming, was uh, researching how to incorporate it into the Ine Express program. The Ine Express program was written uh, by the iDash team beforehand, and uh, it was a Java program that uh, combined cross-platform gene expression data, and it did so using multiple features in multiple layers, such as uh, aligning microarray probes and uh, normalizing samples. And um, the process for me was to uh, convert the current Java code for the quantile normalization into uh, C, and then, which would hopefully help me allow it to uh, change it into CUDA C. And this is just a brief uh, overview of the InExpress project. Uh, the quantile normalization portion occurs within the um, yellow bars because it's a pre, it's part of the pre-processing of the data. Because before we want to analyze it or do anything else, we need to normalize it to make sure that uh, it's comparable and we remove the bias. And quantile normalization is basically um, using the ranks and measures of the, or the ranks of the microarrays to uh, normalize it, which, which again, it helps remove bias and helps in the comparison of the data. And my progress so far this summer has been to uh, finish, I have finished a preliminary C version, and um, it works within the smaller data sets that I've used, but uh, there have been memory issues with whenever uh, anything more than 100 uh, cell, or cell probes have been used. And um, that's actually another problem with the Java program as well. So that's why I'm interested in working with data sets in different ways because it seems to me that as we go forward using more and more data that we need to think of different ways to actually write our programs because we're just gonna run into memory problems everywhere. Um, Another problem that I encountered was uh, while C does have the most support for CUDA, CUDA C is actually a completely different language than C itself. Um, I, when I f first started researching it, I saw C in the in the name, so I, I, I assumed that uh, it was just like an additional library or maybe like an add-on. But uh, CUDA C is actually really complex. Um, it's it might even be considered its own language itself because it's pretty advanced. The libraries um, that work in C don't necessarily work in CUDA C, so that's another uh, hurdle that we have to overcome. Um, in summary, I think that uh, we should really look forward to using more uh, GPU programming. Uh, currently, there is actually a lot of support within the research development and, and informatics uh, arena as well as actually in the finance, any, any computational in intensive uh, research or uh, work is actually looking to using uh, GPU programming. And I think it's a really good opportunity for uh, healthcare informatics to start uh, quickening their uh, products and to create more uh, opportunities for researchers to actually do research rather than data uh, management. And, um, like I said, this this uh, programming, if we could use it effectively, then it could speed up uh, our programs a lot faster. And I would just like to say thank you to everyone in iDash and DBMI, um, because I've had a lot of help researching uh, GPU programming from all the interns. I couldn't really fit uh, everyone that's helped me before. But I'd just like to thank Jihoon Kim as well. Uh, he's the statistician in a uh, iDash, and he's really helped me research this topic. Thank you. Thank you, Howard.